Excellent. So welcome and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, this is Cesar Trabanco from the Global Chamber headquarters, and we welcome you to our first webinar on art. Um, we decided to start doing this event on art, along with Fernando Cordero, which is our, our first um, presenter for, for this series, and his partner, Peter Krieger. The event is going to be in English. Um, although Fernando's part is going to be in Spanish, we have a translator here in the room, so no worries about that. And Fernando is a member in Global Chamber Guanajuato, he's part of the Guanajuato chapter. And we have here today Indira Jeffrey, um, part of our executive team in Guanajuato. And Indira, um, thanks again for putting all this together and, and, and working with Fernando and Dauphine. Um, I'll, I'll pass to you so you can introduce Fernando and Peter and they can take it from there. Okay, Thanks. thank you. Thank you very much, Cesar. Yes, and uh, on behalf of um, the executive director, Arturo Samaripa, I'm very pleased to be here today presenting um, Mr. Fernando Cordero and Mr. Peter Krieger. Uh, we are very excited because uh, this is the first um, event about art and art, the, the art that is taken to museums. Um, Fernando Cordero's uh, um, art has been uh, ex exhibited in several museums in Mexico. And um, well, we have um, his uh, biography. I'm gonna read a little bit about him. Uh, Fernando Cordero is a cinematographer, graduated from the Cinematographic Training Center since 1983. He has been dedicated to architectural photography. Thanks to this, he has collaborated with the most prominent architecture firms in the country. His photographers, uh, I'm sorry, his photographs have, have been part of exhibitions and publications, both nationally and internationally. Similarly, he has lectured on architectural photography in universities, workshops in Colloquia. And um, Mr. Peter Krieger, I uh, hope I pronounce it right, uh, is a research professor, PhD in art history, Hamburg University, Germany. Uh, he graduated in 1996 in the doctoral political e iconography at the Hamburg and House. He has been lecturer in Hamburg and several universities in Germany. He is an architectural critic he is also a research professor at the Institute of Aesthetic Research of the Institute of Investigation Aesthetics and professor at graduate programs of art and history of the National Autonomous University of Mexico. He has been vice president of the International Committee Art History and we can send you all his biography as well as Fernando's both are uh, excellent um, persons on their own um, fields. And it is an honor for us to have them here today. And uh, I'm going to start with Peter. Uh, Peter will be uh, initiating this um, conversational. We hope you enjoy and you can take it over, Mr. Krieger. Thank you very much for being here today. Uh, hello to everyone. It's really uh, an honor for me to be here with you and that's uh, that this is the first event on, on art. And today I will talk about the uh, kind of a conceptual framework of Fernando's uh, photography, the echo aesthetics. And then in the second part of this uh, presentation, uh, Fernando and myself, we have a dialogue on some selected photographs of his uh, work. So I'll start with a famous image of the environmental movement, the Blue Marlboro, 
taken from Apollo 17 in December 1972. Uh, this image shows uh, the fragile beauty of planet Earth, of a planet which is in, in crisis, in an envir environmental crisis. And we, we human beings um, are, and we are in a process of self-destruction, which uh, is coined by scientist Paul Kutzen, uh, Nobel Prize winner Paul Kutzen, who sadly died last year, uh, as the Anthropocene, as a new geological era. So <clears throat> this era, uh, is explained by Crutzen in, these, in this uh, short article of the review Nature, and he gives some definitions. So on the first side, Anthropocene is a scientific topic. Also, it became a political topic in all these uh, conference, conferences on uh, global climate change and so on. But it's also, and this is my starting point, <laughs> and debate, the debate of the, uh, the humanities. And we see here in the article of nature, a kind of a naive illustration of planet earth and a silhouette of cities and fallen trees. Uh, but uh, I really think, and this is my hypothesis, we need uh, the compensation of these debates and the contribution of uh, aesthetic, of aesthetics. And I show you here on the right side some uh, selected words of Fernando Cordero, which show the human impact on Earth. Uh, above, on the right side, uh, the construction of a, a gas pipeline, and uh, below we see a construction site. I will come back to this uh, later. So uh, the definition of uh, the Anthropocene uh, is basically uh, this, uh, that the human being uh, is a geological force. And recently, uh, British scientists found out that we are living in a condition that the technomass on Earth is weighing more than the biomass. So the technomass, uh, this is all uh, what we humans produce, uh, cities, architecture, infrastructure, but also uh, computers, which we are using now, cell phones and so on, everything. So this is a kind of a, a threatening situation that the technomass is uh, heavier than the biomass. And just to give you uh, some, uh, some numbers, uh, we're talking about a technosphere of 3 billion, 30 billion tons, which means with a, a equal distribution on Earth, on the surface of Earth would mean 50 kilogram on uh, each square meter. This is, uh, uh, these are some uh, data which make us think and which uh, again give us a context uh, of these photographs. Uh, for example, the construction of this uh, gas pipeline and the, the excavation. Sorry, my, uh, my PowerPoint is not moving well. And uh, there are several ways of illustrating uh, this human uh, man-made uh, impact on earth. And one of the most, uh, most prominent uh, ways of illustrating this is the famous hockey curve, uh, which is, is based on scientific analysis, scientific data, uh, but also this uh, illustration of the great acceleration which began uh, around 1950. So also it has a visual message. So they, they illustrate the danger, dangerous uh, development in red and red and orange. Uh, but sorry, um, yeah. Okay, but, and I, I, I said this, uh, I think it's very important to activate uh, other, um, other parts of our brains and uh, <clears throat> expose ourselves to uh, products of art, of photography, which show uh, the, the human impact on, on Earth. And uh, one of the topics, uh, one of the, the elements of the non-sustainable non management of Earth is the, uh, the use of energy. We see here on the uh, left side uh, a famous uh, composition of many satellite uh, images uh, from NASA, uh, which show the Earth at night and show the, 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 the unequal distribution of electricity on, uh, on our planet, the US, Europe, China, India. Uh, and this is uh, quite illustrating for us to see uh, what we are 
uh, you know, so generating um, uh, what uh, enormous amounts of energy we are generating and, and consuming. But uh, on the right side, uh, this photograph was taken in 2014, uh, shows uh, another, another aspect of this uh, ma uh, management of non-sustainable management of energy. It's the construction of a gas pipeline in the Mexican states of Querétaro and uh, Pachuca. And it shows uh, that for a pipeline, which will serve only 25 years, they uh, leave their traces uh, in an uh, in an ambience uh, of uh, with high values of bio and geo diversity. So uh, this is my point, and this is my my aspect of research. Uh, we're talking here about a kind of an aesthetic seduction. Uh, when we see this uh, such images, uh, such, such photographs of Fernando Cordero, uh, I'm sorry, someone has his microphone uh, on. Uh, he's some noise. Uh, please switch off the mic. Uh, so we are talking about uh, um, an, an act of sensorial cognition. And the moment when we see these photographs, which obviously are, are very large, uh, then other uh, neural connections are activated. Then uh, we would talk about the, 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 the chemical or the, the physical aspects or the, the engineering of this, uh, of this gas pipeline. So I think, uh, and this is uh, part of my aesthetic research, aesthetic is not the, the normative definition of beauty, but it is in the Aristotelian sense, uh, it's sensorial cognition. So Fernando Cordero produces a work which makes us think and which activates uh, different neural uh, connections. And I prepared uh, some, uh, some categories, and now um, I will give a short introduction to each category, and then uh, we'll start a dialogue with uh, Fernando, uh, who will explain us a little more about his, his work, the, the aesthetic uh, ideas. So the first category is Alexander von, von Humboldt. Um, in, in some respect, uh, I'm sorry, someone has his microphone on. Could you please switch off the microphone? So in, in some respect, the, the photography of um, the landscape photography of Fernando Cordero uh, is reactivating uh, an aesthetics and a concept of the early 19th century of the, the time of uh, romanticism and also of scientific exploration uh, of uh, Alexander von Humboldt in the Americas. So uh, Alexander von Humboldt is an outstanding uh, person who related uh, scientific uh, research with an aesthetic uh, understanding of landscapes. And I think uh, this topic uh, is very important for us uh, today. So um, in his writings, uh, uh, in the cosmos or in the nature views, uh, I highly recommend to, to read these, uh, these books, uh, wonderful books. Uh, we can see how Humboldt conceptualizes landscape and nature. And uh, he, in his times, he always tried to, to climb up the hills and have a, a, an overview, a panorama, a total, to have a total impression of landscape. And um, it's just the first example of uh, these categories. I show you here a work, uh, a sublime work of Fernando Cordero. And I'm sorry, my PowerPoint is not working very well. And uh, so we see here a, a sublime com uh, composition. And I would now ask uh, Fernando to explain us a little bit more about his idea uh, when he took this photograph, uh, the situation and uh, the composition. So please, uh, Fernando. Oh, well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Peter. I would like <clears throat> to thank you first uh, to be invited uh, to this uh, conference. I'm very glad to be here with you people. And I thank you especially to Doug Brumke, the founder of Global Chamber, uh, uh, to Indira, uh, Jeffrey, of course, to Cesar Trabanco, Arturo Somarripa, and very special way to Adria Cordero, my interpreter. I'll keep uh, talking uh, in Spanish because I prefer to express myself 
in this subtle uh, image in my proper, uh, my original language. So uh, yes, uh, sí, Peter. Uh, esta imagen uh, provoca en this mí. This image triggers in me. Uh, uh, a whole set of emotions of uh, memories that are tightly linked to losses and they actually motivate me, lead me to understand these personal losses. And the universal losses, because we are somehow connected emotionally with our planet. And my work focuses greatly on these emotions that a trigger in me, a reason, a strength to pursue my work. Now, the dominating uh, subject matter are these different planes. And I would like to think that this image uh, conveys the same message than planet Earth as seen from this image taken by NASA. Okay, so this image to begin with presents these values and this triggers in me a whole set of emotions and it is uh, quite emotional to see it again. Just let me know when he finishes his statement. Okay, Peter, puedes continuar. All right, Peter, uh, the floor is yours. Okay. So the next uh, category, uh, which uh, I am presenting here to, to show you kind of an uh, overview of Fernando's work, it's called Interferences. And uh, this image here uh, shows um, in <clears throat> the way, the subtle way of composing, uh, which, uh, which Fernando uh, applies in his, his work, in his uh, photographic work. So we have here uh, a situation uh, with a mountainscape uh, with fog. So some uh, visual and aesthetic patterns of, of uh, German or English romanticism uh, art, uh, but there's also a small detail down there. It's a barbed wire. So um, I think this is a very um, revealing photograph that uh, Fernando does not only uh, present the beauty of nature, but also is presenting the threats, the threats via environmental uh, destruction, but also the threats of uh, social problems, political problems, and in this case, the barbed wire of people who are excluding nature uh, in this landscape. So maybe, Fernando, you can talk about it, how you took this photograph, what was the, the situation, and what was your idea behind this, uh, this photograph? This image has many metaphors that are tied to religious and philosophical matters and ideas. And they are grounded at some point in a picture that was taken in a highly dangerous area 
since these are territories that were the chosen path for drug smog for drug smuggling so the organized crime issue is tied to this region and obviously these are pictures i treasure uh, they, they are very personal to me because it has been quite a deed to go and take these pictures. Actually, the barbed wire you see there, it's a landscape with great poetical content. The occurring uh, events of the world. I cannot just isolate Mexico in this. The current situation is a daily tragedy. We're all living. The world is being fragmented in territories into territories. Even for a photographer, an art photographer approaching this area, his life is at stake. Since we are spying on something that literally does not belong to him. Thank you. Okay, this uh, photograph uh, shows uh, how uh, Fernando works. So he's uh, seducing us uh, with this wonderful view, but he's also including uh, a critical aspect in this kind, in, in this, uh, in this uh, model here, in this object, the problems of the, the drug lords who are occupying territories uh, in Mexico. So we're talking about um, um, the, the, the sensorial seduction and the, the next uh, photograph you have already seen is the construction of a gas pipeline in 2014. And uh, in this case, we see here uh, also a notion of uh, romanticism, art, and of Humboldt, uh, that the, the, the mountains have a rhetoric. So we can read the mountains. We, go, we have an insight here, a panoramic view of the deep time of geology. So millions of years. And then we have the writings uh, of our contemporary times uh, of this uh, raising uh, the, the, the white line here uh, for the gas pipeline. So that we have different uh, temporalities here. And uh, I'd like to point out that um, Fernando's work is uh, artistic photography. It's not propaganda uh, photo photography of maybe of Greenpeace campaigns and so on, but he's, he is uh, giving us a chance to, to contemplate this wonderful views and then brings us to, uh, to, to criticism, to environmental criticism. So Fernando, please tell us a little bit more about uh, the series of photographs which you did in 2014. Yes, indeed. I'm sorry, your connection is not there. I think you're muted. Uh, the interpreter cannot hear the speaker. Sorry. Fernando. Sorry about this technical. Oh, I can't hear you. Yes. Mm. Fernando. Aquí estoy. Eh, ah. Hay una llamada. Es, hay algo está pasando. Oh, hey, something's people. happening. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, yes. No I can't hear the speaker, and he's about to solve the issue. Eh, en un segundo lo resuelvo. So while we're 
waiting for the solution. We have more time to contemplate. Okay. You. I think I'm all set. Okay. Okay. Uh, they were asking me to make a publication. Okay, a publication uh, speaking and detailing the gas pipeline. The great uh, technological advancement shown there. And they lowered all costs. And from the uh, time and cost, uh, uh, perspective, that's what they, they were seeking. So I suggested to better make a publication instead. A publication regarding the impact of this gas pipeline. Of course, an ecological and social impact. And to speak critically about it. All the while understanding that the Hidalgo Sierra or mountain range had never been conquered The Otomi culture had resisted for the, because of their orography, it was impossible to get into the Sierra and conquer it. And then 500 years later, a gas pipeline in this terrain, and the satellite uh, TV system were the tools that conquered this territory, this terrain. And to me, what's important to show here is the irony of these, uh, the name of this mountain range of the Sierra is the uh, summit of the eagle. And this turns it absolutely into a romantic element. However, on the left hand side of this image, on top, we can still see. a scar from the gas pipeline. And in spite of the great technology, this is a land that set great challenges to them. So that they could place all the system they could ground all the system since obviously there were landslides all around it since it was at an angle at an angle that technologically speaking it was one of the weakest points of the, one of the weakest points of this gas pipeline, right there. Thank you. Yes, the next uh, category is um, erosion, which is uh, in fact a category from uh, geology. And <clears throat> I show you some more details. It's a whole series, and which is called scars. Actually, scars on the, on the landscape, the scars which we human beings, which we engineers, are, are producing. 
So erosion is uh, a technical or scientific uh, term of explaining earth movements, but it also it has metaphorical uh, plus uh, and uh, uh, which means we are talking about erosion of values, erosion of values of natural values of cultural uh, values. We see here uh, how the caterpillars uh, are um, are on the construction side and what happens. Uh, it's not only the, the small strip, but also it, it's um, uh, these parts of this uh, rainforest becomes a kind of a desert dried out desert soil. So <clears throat> I think uh, what we see here is information and is a, it's an important uh, um, contribution to environmental debates on our management of energy. Do we need such, such an amount of energy? Should we change something uh, in, in order to, to, to uh, have better living conditions on, on this world? So in, in this respect, uh, uh, the work of Fernando, this part of the work, uh, is uh, integrated into the so-called geological turn, which means that uh, uh, geological issues such as the, the analysis uh, of mountainscapes is not only in an aspect of, uh, of science, of uh, the earth sciences, but also of the humanities and of the arts. So um, Fernando nos, uh, will, shows us uh, his, his view, his artistic view, his sublime view uh, of the catastrophe um, uh, which we are living every day. So uh, maybe um, Fernando, you can briefly talk about your experience in the, the helicopter and when you took these uh, shots. Uh, we don't hear the translation. Uh, we cannot hear the translation. Please turn on your microphone. Uh, Fernando, we cannot hear the, the translation. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, indeed. Indeed. These images give me this feeling, this emotion. Uh, it's a scar. It's a knife that has been carving these flanks, this highly sophisticated technology that is, that is carving these flanks, that we can open, tear the earth open with such ease, with no license, no permission whatsoever, just because we need. Because we just need hot water to take a shower amongst many things, take a hot shower in the morning amongst other things. So it's comprehensible, of course, to have uh, comfort around us. We have needs, however, as Peter just uh, implied, we are actually raising the massified forests. And that's where water is produced. And the ecosystemic phenomenon in those woods is the same system that prevails in the oceans and other ecosystems. Thank you. Uh, the next um, category is uh, infrastructure. And I remember what I said before, uh, the techno mass is, is weighing more than the, the biomass on, on earth. And I'm showing here um, uh, one of uh, uh, um, photograph of, of another series on uh, on the pr production or the construction of a dam in northern uh, Mexico. And here again, we see a very interesting uh, case that, um, <clears throat> of course, uh, we need dams uh, for water supply 
and for, for many other reasons for producing electricity and so on. But on the same time, uh, these dams are, are generating a severe damage of the ecosystems in this, car, uh, in this case here. And uh, it's the same principle that uh, Fernando's not uh, raising his finger, you should not do this, uh, just like a environmental political campaign, but he's presenting uh, this monument of the homo father of the engineer uh, as, as a monument uh, highlighted. So we have uh, the, the, the choice to, to, uh, to get into this atmosphere and then take our decision. Is it, is it some necessary uh, infrastructure or uh, what, what is the, uh, what's the impact? If you, you see the, the uh, the enormous amount of uh, reinforced concrete uh, uh, con contrasting to the to the rocks, the rocks which have millions of, of years. So uh, I think this is kind of a, a image of reflection, which in German A.B. Warburg called Denkbild, image of reflection. So uh, we, if we contemplate this this image, we can uh, understand uh, the principles of our. The civilization and the problems of our civil, human civilization. So, Fernando, talk a lot about this when you took this and what was the situation of this construction site and what was your aesthetic decision when you took this photograph? Yes, as Petter just said it, it is not about to point fingers through art at the guilt, at the culprits, at uh, assertiveness, at the success or the failures of things. In many senses, in many ways, it has to do with the common sense, uh, with the uh, criterion to apprehend when you see this mass of concrete that is ground ingrained into the rock that contains trillions and trillions of water of liters of water the way this affects and impacts life in the river And obviously, in the balance, the equilibrium, in the zone, in the weather. And this added up to the difficulties of reaching this particular site. And this is the region of Sinaloa. where, well, I had to go to the Sierra, travel to the Sierra, and I had to go, I had to go through all the issues that this construction, the impact this construction had in the population. And of course, the vested interests of drug smuggling Thank you. The uh, next uh, category is uh, excavation. So uh, again, the, the techno mass, uh, we are sealing uh, the, the, the soils of, of planet Earth. And, and this motive here is quite, uh, apparently quite banal. It's a con it's construction site uh, in, in Mexico City, in the mega city with well, more than 20 million inhabitants expanding, expanding enormously. And um, it's the same principle that it's uh, apparently uh, a very banal uh, motive. But if you look into the detail and see, for example, on the, on the left side, how it is carved in, into, into the earth, and then the, <clears throat> the, the, the atmosphere, the dark atmosphere, it's kind of a, a filmic, a film setting, and then you have this uh, uh, the space where you, can, you have a small window uh, towards the the hyper urban uh, landscape. So 
also this uh, this image if you begin to to see the details and the composition and it's uh, what is irradiating it's kind of an alert alert what we we are doing with uh, our territories with our natural territories converting them in, in construction sites and ignoring uh, the specific conditions uh, of the of the soil of the geological foundations of, of earth so uh, fernando tells a little bit now why did you take this uh, this photo of this construct construction site this image was taken uh, based on this ironical feeling you find in there as a petter said it so well it has some uh, cinematographic nuances and shades to it that are undoubtedly tied to my uh, work in the movie industry, in the cinematographic industry, the composition we see here on the right hand side, we have an intervention with concrete and on the left-hand side, the mountain that has just been cut off. And way, way back through a tiny window, we can see the city. And this becomes uh, this scheme of uh, drawings and, and, and styles that really fascinate me. And, and these trails and wakes that really fascinate me. It is thrilling to see that there there is an eye or several eyes. That can bear image by image, frame by frame. All the different sections of the image to really understand and apprehend this wave. On the left hand side how the mountain could eat up all this in a second. Thank you. Uh, the next category uh, is called uh, carceri. It's an Italian word and refers to a series of, um, of images made by Piranesi, the famous Italian artist of the 18th century. And in this series, carceri, um, <clears throat> Piranesi showed us uh, uh, fantasy underworlds, threatening underworlds, and um, I, I'm taking this as a as a reference, a very important reference for this photograph of a subterranean uh, parking space uh, in a uh, apartment uh, block in Mexico City, and Fernando was commissioned to to take photographs of this, and then he discovered uh, the magic, the cutlery uh, magic of this space, which is also quite banal. It's con concrete, uh, not very uh, elaborated architectural design, just functional that people could walk down, go to their car. But uh, in his view, an aesthetic view, an artistic sensibility, he sees e even the magic in these um, forgotten uh, and peripheral uh, spaces uh, with uh, the effects of the light when Fernando takes the, the photographs in the moment. So Fernando, please tell us a little bit about how did you find or came to the decision that you would photograph this, which was not your commission. Your commission was to photograph the whole the building uh, blocks of the apartment block, but not the, 
the, the staircase down to the parking space. So let's uh, know a little, little bit more about that. Yes, I was commissioned to photograph the uh, high, uh, high flights of these luxury uh, apartment buildings. And obviously I did the work the way it had to be done. However, this parking lot, it, to me, it was sublime to see how the concrete uh, route uh, was actually creating a confusion of ascents and descents. And it seemed to me it was very relevant and I had to devise how I could emphasize and highlight the irony and uh, this ironic thing, how it could be found in a parking lot. This is a crucial image that launched the exhibit. that was shown at the uh, Seminario de Cultura Mexicana, the Mexican Culture Seminar. And this is a spearhead of this uh, exhibit. In these luxury apartment buildings that are located in Mexico City. and that such exquisite things can exist. Thank you. So Fernando is discovering different sites. In this case, uh, he goes to the underworlds and, and see uh, different uh, worlds uh, there. And I must say what we present here on the screen is just a reproduction, of course, uh, nothing comparable to see this photograph in big format with high quality print uh, on the walls uh, of a museum or a, a gallery. So the, the, last, uh, the last category um, in this brief presentation or the work of Fernando Corderas uh, is called evolution. And I'd like to finish with this fascinating image of water. So water, this essential liquid for, for us, uh, we, we have now uh, just at this time, a heavy water crisis in the Northern part of Mexico, Monterrey and other parts uh, as well. So um, there's a lack of consciousness of water. We just open the, the tap and have our water. But uh, what's fascinating, that's not only water is a topic of engineers of um, engineers or scientists of uh, chemistry, but also an aesthetic issue. And this photograph uh, of, a, of a river shows us the, the beauty and the, uh, the complexity of the streams of water. Uh, this is, I think, um, uh, also photograph which you, we should imagine in, in big format uh, on the wall of a museum, uh, which shows, uh, which lets us think about the complexity of life, of this essential uh, element uh, of life. So uh, Fernando, tell us a little bit more about this, uh, this photograph, the situation, and what happened to the river where you photographed this. This is a river called Rio Claro. El Rio Claro. As its name points out, it's, it's, a, it's water of the highest purity. However, the water being so transparent, so crystalline, it would have been impossible to actually take a picture of such crystalline state of the water. And this quality, luckily, I found a spot. 
were this algae that look like horse, uh, like horse hair. I thought it was the most graphic uh, manner in which I could possibly take an image and, interp and interpret the course of the water. And so that water would lose its liquid quality and it would also acquire the quality of air. And hours later, this river was filled with soil because uh, after an explosion, uh, in the upper part of the river during the construction of the gas pipeline. Obviously, it's not, its name is not Rio Claro anymore. Thank you. So this is kind of a memento mori. It's a, a picture of, of the past. And I would like to, to say also that uh, this photograph is, of course, uh, a highly sophisticated aesthetic event, but also uh, it shows the relation between art and science, but it, it gives information on, on chaos theory and complexity theory and so on. So I think this is uh, one of the fascinating aspects of Fernando's work as well, that he is offering material for reflections, not only for the uh, viewers of a gallery, but also for, for politicians, for engineers, and for scientists, that they can see their worlds, their, their small worlds, with another from another angle. So I think this is one of the fascinating aspects. So we did a book uh, on, on his work. Uh, we, we showed his exhibition in some museums, and we did a book, The Photography of Fernando Cordero, and I'd like to uh, finish with this um, image of the book. And now um, at, at the end, uh, Fernando wants to give a, a statement uh, as an artist. So thank you for uh, watching this uh, short presentation. And now Fernando, please uh, uh, give us some final remarks. Well, many of the images we have just seen are part of this editorial project. And somehow in, um, as, in somehow as a digital offset, we uh, made uh, 50 volumes for a conference that uh, Professor Petter held uh, with some colleagues hailing from here from Europe and South America. This collection and many of the images are part of the exhibit. And we, uh, well, the idea is to show them in contemporary art museums. These works deserve to be shown in these places because of the content we can find in them. And as Professor Petter says it, uh, with an aesthetic reflection, well grounded also on scientific thought. Eh, me gustaría, I'm open to I take like... my exhibit to uh, museums around the world. And I want to create awareness about this. I thank you very much uh, to all the equipment of Global Chamber to make possible this. And at the end, please thank you very much to Peter Krieger.
Yes, just a, a, one last word. Uh, we made this first uh, edition of the book in 2019 when we celebrated the 250 years of Alexander von Humboldt. And actually we invited also many co colleagues from the US and we had this, uh, this co conference sponsored by the Terror Foundation of, of Chicago, just uh, additional information. So thank you for your interest and uh, we are happy to, to answer your, your questions right, right now. Thank you very much, Fernando and, and Peter. Um, Fernando, congratulations on, on, on your, your foils. Very, very nice. Um, I, I would like to open the floor. We only have a couple of minutes, but if any of you has a, has a question, please feel free to jump in now. And, and if not, I would like to start with one question, Fernando, and maybe Peter, you can add to it. Um, what's the next step? And, you know, as you align this with the em environmental issues of the earth, are you, are you working with some organizations? Are you um, selling your, your pictures or your, your photos for, for, um, to contribute to all these organizations that are helping the planet? So what's, that, what's the next step and how, how can everyone here help you in, 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 in that sense? Peter or myself can answer that? Yes. I would like to say that actually these images are part of many works that exist around the world that focus on these types of reflections. That many artists have. And we do not find any places where we can exhibit and then make people aware of our work and have emotions about it. And so far as we can influence, and convey this need and understanding that we are actually on a process of self-extinction. I don't want to sound apocalyptical in any way. But undoubtedly, the underlying irony of these images, where we see great beauty, great purity, this actually hides Pandora's box. And yes, I would love to think that the book and the exhibit could be presented and shown in contemporary art museums. Of course, to disseminate the work and today with our technology, I'd love to think that we can convene uh, in person and virtually too. Thank you. I may add uh, one of the, the main um, issues of this project of the exhibition and, and the book is to, to generate uh, in this discursive impact to have a debate on environmental ethics and aesthetics. Uh, this is our goal and in practical terms we are searching for exhibition spaces because it has become difficult during, uh, during the pandemic uh, but I think now we see almost the end of the pandemic so we re, uh, restart uh, the project but the idea is not only to have a, a delight in a museum and, and sit, sit on the sofa and, and have the book in the hand but also to generate an impact and have colloquia, have debates round tables and so on, just to generate consciousness. That, that's, our, that's our main, main, uh, main goal of this project. So thank you. 
Thanks again. Um, I would like to, as a closing statement, I would like to invite, I don't know, um, Doug, Doug Bronke, our CEO, he's still here, um, to say a few words about our first event on art. And also because I know Fernando has Phoenix as a place of interest. So Doug, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Cesar. Um, and thank you both uh, and Adira also for your leadership and uh, with Arturo and pulling this together. You know, art history um, and the business of art is near and dear to me. My closest uncle was an art historian. Um, you know, my family, by the way, is is historically from Germany. So, Professor, thank you for uh, uh, for sharing uh, your perspectives on this. Uh, art aligns very well with us navigating life um, and especially when life becomes challenging and more difficult, uh, art becomes more important. And so thank you for sharing this conversation today and the alignment of the artist vision with uh, things we should be caring about, things we should be worrying about. Um, and so that aspect really hit me when you when you were were speaking about it, both of you. Also, um, the business of art uh, is an important topic. Uh, we need to keep artists around and, and busy and, and be able to put a roof over their head. One of the things I think that COVID has given us is hopefully a better perspective, whether it's artists as we've seen today, uh, uh, musicians, uh, others that are creative, you know, when COVID came around one of the certainly the detrimental impacts has been showing their art uh, in public places demonstrating their art and that removed a revenue stream um, for them uh, and made it more difficult for them to to do their art and so thank you for for to both of you for persevering thank you for your presentation today and let's all as artists or those who appreciate art or just business people, let's remember that it's our obligation to keep these aspects of, of our lives alive and protected and ongoingly continuing to improve their ability to perform. Uh, and, and in this case, take pictures of, of art that's very important for the future of, of the world and for our general well-being as well. So thank you for, for all that you've shared today. It's been very important and significant, especially as our first art history, art of business a conversation here at Global Chamber. And reach out along the way for any help that you may need. Thank you both. Thanks, thanks. Doug, and thanks, Peter, Fernando. Uh, hope to see you again at one of our events. And we're going to be sharing the, the recording along with all the information. So we're going to be sharing all the Fernando's social media and website and all, all the info. So thanks again, everyone. Um, going to be until the next time. Have a good one. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you very, very much. Please reach out for any help you need. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Doug. Yeah. Muchas gracias.